Hi, this is Lynn and Aaron with Traveling Flamingo, and today we're going to be talking to you guys about everything you need to know before sailing with Norwegian Cruise Line. We've broken it down into five main categories and look forward to sharing that with you so you've got all the information you need before you start your cruise. Coming right up. So we have five main categories that we're going to go through, and that's dining and drinks, entertainment, the staterooms, and ship features, and specific things for Norwegian. So this would be stuff like their policies and procedures or offers that they have that are specific to their cruise line. So let's start this with dining and drinks. Norwegian Cruise Lines has what's called freestyle cruising. This means you can cruise your way. You, there are no set dining times and you don't need to dine with the same people like you do on other cruises where you're always with the same table group. You decide where and when you want to eat and you just book it. Very much like a restaurant on land, you go ahead and either book it for and create a reservation or you can just show up at the podium and ask to be seated and if there's availability they'll seat you. This means there's no formal nights and you're welcome to dress up any day of the cruise or no days on your cruise. It's completely up to you. There are only a few select restaurants that do have a dress code. On the Norwegian Breakaway, there were three, and they all require only long pants. One thing NCL is known for is having a variety of restaurant options on board. We were on the Breakaway, as Aaron said, and there are t over 22 restaurants and bars available. However, not all of them are free. There are complimentary restaurants and specialty restaurants where you'll have to pay for the specialty ones. They do also offer dining packages, so you can check those out. Some are set price to pay for three specialty restaurants, and you can save a little bit of money, but you'll want to make sure that you do plan on eating at those restaurants. We also found that many of the restaurants were worth the upcharge. Some cruise lines, they're not always quite as uh, worthwhile. The main dining rooms are sometimes really good. And that isn't to say that the main dining rooms were not good on Norwegian, but we did find that you know you had more uh, alcohol in the tiramisu or the steaks were a lot better at Cagney's, for example. And there was good value in going to those more expensive restaurants. That said, the buffet was pretty good. Probably not our favorite buffet on a, on a ship. However, the main dining room was also really good, but those specialty restaurants were just amazing. So the three main dining rooms are Savor, Taste, and the Manhattan Room. They all have the exact same kitchen and menu. So if on your trip you don't get into one of them, don't worry, you haven't missed too much. The only difference is in the Manhattan Room, they will sometimes have live music playing in the evening as well. Just to wrap up our section on dining and drinks, we have always found it very helpful to bring a reusable water bottle and a travel mug, not only for the environmental impacts, but also for the financial as well. Water can be very expensive and you're wasting all those plastic bottles. They do have all-inclusive drink packages, but those don't include water or specialty coffee. At the buffet though, you can get coffee and tea, as well as lemonade, iced tea, and some select favorite flavored waters for free. So we found bringing our own water bottle, going to the buffet, you get a clean cup, you refill your water bottle, and Aaron also enjoyed using the travel mug because he could put some lemonade and ice in it and have a drink that would stay cooler a little bit longer in the Caribbean heat. But again, you don't fill your drink directly, you just fill it into a clean cup and then pour it in. A great way to save a little bit of money, stay hydrated, and save the environment too. Our second category of tips is entertainment. So always remember to participate. There's lots of different shows that you can join and be part of and have a lot of fun with, like the Newlywed Not So Newlywed show. There's a glow party, which is like an outdoor disco. There's bingo nights. And these things will always add a lot of fun to your trip. The Broadway shows are amazing, but remember there are some entertainment that is adult only. Uh, some of the comedians or magicians and so forth can be adult only and not family friendly, so watch out for those signs when you enter the theater. They'll let you know whether or not they are for all ages. NCL is fairly known for its water slides and aqua parks on their ships, so whatever ship you're on, you can pretty much guarantee there'll be a water slide. They also have a lot of industry first entertainment, such as go-karts on the NCL Bliss, and we also tried the rock climbing and high ropes course, so there's a lot of entertainment on the ships for people of all ages. 
Don't forget that some of this entertainment is an additional charge and some isn't, but it can be very well worth it for those additional charge entertainment venues. For instance, we watched Wine Lovers the Musical, which was a musical where they provide you with a meal and they also give you seven, you know, quote unquote, free glasses of wine with your meal. It was about $39 for us to go on that. However, you know, that's what you're going to pay for for a specialty meal on the ship generally anyways. So definitely made sense and was a lot of fun to have a show with that. There's also stuff like escape rooms. Those escape rooms are free. And, you know, be sure to book that early. It does get very busy and it does fill out. Our last point about entertainment has to do with excursions. So there, it's relatively easy to research excursions and compare them online. We found this really helpful to do before we went away because we could see what we were interested in, read and hear some of the feedback from other travelers. You always have the option of booking with NCL or a lot of the ports. You also have third party vendors there that you can be purchasing your excursions from as well but that's something you're going to want to spend a little bit of time looking into before you leave on your trip some of those excursions do book up very very fast so you'll want to get in there online before your trip and make sure anything you really want to do you go ahead and book if there's things you're not too sure about you may or may not want to feel free to leave those or even do them on the do them when you get to the dock and you know find one of the excursion groups Uh, but if there's something you really really want to do book it ahead of time Our next category is staterooms. We only really have one tip in this category, so it should go pretty quick. The power outlets in your room are very limited. Most ships only have about two US power plugs, but there's also two additional EU travel uh, plugs that you can use. We highly suggest a multi-port USB charger so you can maximize the number of outlets you have in the room. Otherwise, you can only really plug in two or three devices at once without using the European adapter. So remember to travel with a universal power adapter because you can then optimize those two. You can actually use those two ports. There is also a outlet uh, in the bathroom that you can use for shavers. However, that is usually connected to the power switch. So if you turn the light off at night and you're trying to use that to charge something, it won't charge. That said, your outlets are also connected to that key card that goes in your room to turn on the lights. So if you turn off the lights in the room by taking out the card, you will stop charging whatever you have in those plugs. So do remember charging is linked to those switches and you can't just have it charge forever. We'll put a link to the charger that we use in the description below. If you're interested in picking it up, go ahead and do that. Uh, It will be affiliated with Amazon, but of course you don't have to if you don't want to. Okay, on to our fourth category, the ship features. NCL is very family friendly. It has a lot of stuff for the kids. They've got Splash Academy, which is for ages 3 to 12, Entourage, which is ages 13 to 17. In there, they've got theme nights, activities, video games, and we've already talked about the pool and the slides for kids. They do also have what they call the guppies, which is the nursery for six months to three years old. There is an additional charge for that, but from what we saw and heard, they have a lot of great activities for the kids on the ship. There is also the highest cost rooms, which is called the Haven Suites on Norwegian Cruise Lines. And they do have a private pool, restaurant and bar, as well as pre-reserved seating at many of the shows. And they also get priority embarkation and disembarkation. If this is in your budget, we highly recommend you opt for this because you do get that private pool. And that private pool is very important on some of these ships because when you're using a lot of the surface area for uh, slides and so forth, you really only have one pool that's left for people who didn't opt for the Haven. That said, you can also choose the thermal spa or the spa rooms. And a lot of the ships do have an indoor pool, a body temperature pool that you can use. Again, it is indoors, so you're not going to be sunbathing in there. However, you will get a pool and it's a bit less costly than the Haven Suites. But if you can manage the Haven Suites, you do get that extra pool, which is very useful, especially on some of those Caribbean or hotter trips. Another good option for a quiet and relaxing area is the thermal spa. So when you get that thermal spa package, you get access to an indoor pool, sauna, scenarium, steam room, and salt rooms. They do also have additional loungers as well as a lounger made of tile, which is heated, a thermal lounger, and it's very nice on your sore muscles. So again, this is just a nice quiet area that you can go to. You can't suntan, but it's not as busy as the main pool and great for relaxing. 
Some of the newer ships also have a great area called the waterfront. This goes all the way around to the middle of the ship around deck six or seven. And it gives you a place about midway up the ship to sit. You can eat dinner out there. It's kind of where your La Cucina, your Cagney Steakhouse, a bunch of little bars and so forth are. They've got large chairs, they've got loungers, and it gives you a second place to relax other than the Lido decks. These tend to be pretty quiet, so highly suggest if you want to get away from some of the busyness on the higher decks, you go ahead head to the waterfront, nice little area to relax. When we were there, you didn't really have that many people out there. On our Caribbean cruise, it's a bit hotter, so guessing a lot of people probably didn't want to eat dinner out there in the heat, but it was a great place to just relax. At the end of the night, we'd go down there and we'd watch the waves go by. NCL do not have any laundry rooms that are available to guests. However, they do offer a laundry service where you can get a bag and fill it for $20. They also have a embarkation deal so you can look out for that but then they will do their laundry for you so it's all about relaxing so our next category and last category is norwegian specific things so these are things that they do from a policy perspective or a process perspective or a marketing perspective so one thing that we noticed about Norwegian is it really places itself in the middle of the cruise market. It's not trying to be a high-end luxury ship like Cunard or even Princess, and it's not sort of a low-end booze cruise where you can just go out for three days and have unlimited alcohol. It is sort of competing mid-market. They've got a bunch of stuff for your kids. They've got a bunch of stuff for adults. They've got adult comedy and so forth as well. And they've also got things, you know, all the way in between. You can expect the prices to be a bit cheaper on average. However, there are a lot of upcharges on the ships itself from a la carte and fixed price dining restaurants to additional charges for some of the entertainment and shows that we talked about before. So Norwegian has what they call free for all packages, which includes a lot of things that you might want, but that's only available for specific room types. For example, some of the lower cost ones like the sail away cabins, which are non-guaranteed rooms. Non-guaranteed means that within the category you purchased, so for example, balconies, they will place you on the ship somewhere. So you could be under a pool, you could have an obstructed balcony, but it is cheaper. So you won't get the sail away free for all uh, packages on sail away rooms. What those sail aways include is a free open bar, shore excursions, usually a discount like $50, specialty dining free, Wi-Fi, so you get a certain amount of, of time, friends and family can sail free, and free or reduced airfare. That said, when you look at the fine print, the offers are only available for balcony staterooms and above, 20% gratuities apply on unlimited open bar and specialty dining. Friends and families free sailing are only available on select sailings and free or reduced airfare from select gateways on select sailings for ocean view rooms or above. So there are quite a number of restrictions here. However, you can, for the most part, get free open bar, a discount on shore excursions, specialty dining included, some Wi-Fi, and you can get that depending on the type of cruise that you have. So you'll see here as we show you what it looks like when you book, it'll highlight what's available for you. But again, it's only on the more expensive rooms. If you wanna do a sail away, which is the lowest price, you usually won't get those discounts. So just something to keep in mind. That said, we did book a sail away cabin and on the Norwegian breakaway, we were more than happy. There really aren't any obstructed balconies on that ship. And we were, we did upgrade to a spa room, which we'll talk about shortly. And you know, it was great. We did find that due to the number of people who are picking the free for all packages, you can expect a fair number of people uh, to be enjoying the open bar drink package. It was a bit of a joke on the ship a couple times too. 50% of the adults actually had that package. So the first night we noticed uh, quite a bit of people drinking pretty liberally, but it did calm down as the trip went on. And we even heard another young couple saying, you know, we're not starting before five because I don't want to be in bed by nine again. So, you know, people, you're going to enjoy it, but you've got a, you've got a trip ahead of you as well. Something else that's really cool that NCL allows you to do is bid to upgrade your room. So we had paid for the sail away balcony and decided to participate in this bid. So you can specify the amount of money you would be willing to spend to upgrade and NCL will decide if they want you to do that. So we bid $100 to upgrade our balcony to a spa balcony room and it was accepted. So it was only $100 Canadian each for the whole trip and we had access to that thermal spa and thoroughly enjoyed being able to go in there to relax. 
It was very easy to upgrade as well. So online, you just put in your bid. The lowest we could go was $100 Canadian. And we thought, hey, you know, why not? Who knows if we're going to get it? And again, it was accepted and we did get that room. So we got uh, access to the thermal suite for the entirety of our cruise, which was very nice. Continuing on that theme, their digital tools and website were really, really pretty good. Not all of these, uh, not all of these uh, different cruise lines have great digital tools to help you sort of plan and organize. However, this was was pretty good. It was pretty acceptable. I wouldn't say it's the world's greatest, but you know you could use it fairly easily. You could research your excursions. You could select the packages that you wanted before you got on the ship. And when you did get on the ship, they do have a mobile app. And that same mobile app that you can use before you're on the ship is doubles as your itinerary and your planner. They do have a paper planner. They do have the Freestyle Daily, I believe they call it however there's a digital version of that as well in case you forget it in the room you can book your your rooms in there you can also book different entertainment the one thing that i think you should be aware of before you go is if you do want to message onboard guests so using the wi-fi there's a ten dollar us fee to do that which i thought was was interesting uh, that said though the app is pretty good be sure to download that app before you get on board the last tip that I have before I hand it over to Linda to take us home is about the Wi-Fi and the internet on board. So a lot of the time the internet on board is slow. A lot of people do have that free for all package, which does also include some amount of internet. And just to let you know, it was slow. It was very intermittent. It took us about 20 minutes just to check in for our flight. Uh, we did, it's, it's per minute cost. Uh, speed wasn't great. If you want to do, you know, maybe posting a couple videos to Instagram or pictures to Instagram or some social media stuff, you can probably get along doing that fairly well. However, again, not great. Not as good as some of the more modern stuff like the, I think it's OB2 or O2B networks that's on the Royal Caribbean ships. However, it wasn't horrible. It wasn't consistently slow. You could get your stuff done. It just did, you know, take a little bit of extra time. Just as a slight side note, um, I did find that the smoking areas on the ship were in really high traffic areas. So one of them is in the casino and there's this beautiful three-story chandelier right in the middle of the ship and the casino is on the second story of it and it's all open. So in those areas, in the noodle bar restaurant upstairs, you can really have that presence of the smoke there. And if you're a non-smoker and have allergies to smoke, you are aware of that in some of these high traffic areas on the ship. And as for our last point, we're going to talk about gratuity. So as many other cruises in North America, gratuity is not included in your cruise fees. So you're going to be expecting to pay for that either in advance of your cruise or afterwards. It's a 20% gratuity. Also, if you order the drink package, you'll pay 20% of the cost of the package. However, this does mean that you don't have to worry about tipping on board unless you want to give a little bit extra where you would like. So we usually do it for our room so steward and anywhere we get exceptional service on the ship. We also like to pay for ours in advance so that way afterwards you're not having to worry about a large bill in the end too. We, I would also keep in mind that gratuity does not cover anything that you do off the ship, so such as excursions or meals. So make sure you do tip your tour guides and bus drivers because they do a fantastic job. And always remember to tip for great service. These employees work very hard. They're away from their family for a very long time and they do try to make your trip as great as they can. So, you know, we had a great room steward, Denise, who was really, really helpful and very, very attentive. And we would just like to thank everybody who was on our cruise, who was so amazing from the ship stewards all the way to the activities directors and the activity employees the chefs, everybody who goes above and beyond to make these types of things an amazing never to forget vacation. So a big thank you to the staff of NCL and the staff of the Norwegian Breakaway for all that they did while we were there. I would also like to take the opportunity to thank everybody who's watching and who have subscribed to our little channel. We're so excited to be over 600 subscribers. I mean, we remember getting excited when we had 25 people and, you know, to have subscribers who aren't just our family members who really enjoy watching, you know, it means a lot to us that you guys have taken the time to be watching and subscribing to our videos. 
We also really appreciate all the comments that we are getting on our videos and the discussion that's happening. Some people are asking us great, great questions and are sharing their own feedback and experiences from their cruises and activities that they've done. And it really means a lot to us to be active in this community as well. I think that we can all be learning and enjoying and experiencing from each other all together. So thanks again for watching. We really hope that you enjoyed this video and got some helpful tips for planning your own trip with Norwegian. Or maybe you've been on a cruise with Norwegian already and are looking back over it, remembering some of the wonderful places that you've been to eat. So thanks again for watching and happy travels.